What's going on guys? Today's video is going to be a slight bit different from what I typically give you guys, from what you guys are used to seeing on this channel. Uh, today's video is not going to consist of anything Hackintosh related, although don't worry, it's still going to be a huge focus on my channel. I am looking to branch out a little bit on my channel, get maybe some more into Windows stuff, and this is going to be a first on my channel, some server related stuff. Today's video is going to be the unboxing of the Supermicro MBD X10 SLL F0 Micro ATX motherboard. Thumbs up for remembering that model number because I'm not reading that off anywhere right now. Uh, but like I said, this is going to be my, I guess, entrance into the server world. Now this is a very, I guess, you know, early adopters server or a very basic server. The specs of this thing are not going to be very out of this world at all. But what this is going to be geared for is an ESXi learning lab. Um, you know, I'm going to be graduating college here in just a few months, which is kind of crazy to think about. Uh, but you know, from the, where I'm interning at now and just what I see online, VMware ESXi is just becoming very widely adopted and it's something that honestly just fascinates me and it's something that I really want to learn about get more into and eventually share that knowledge with other people so this is going to be a nice little testing environment for me to you know poke around and get some things up and running uh, but this video for now is just going to be the unboxing of this motherboard and so with that said let's go ahead and unbox this thing so here we have the box of the motherboard once again from Supermicro. I do want to restate this that this is by no means a very high-end server whatsoever. This is actually on the other side of the spectrum. This is a very entry-level server. To give you guys sort of an idea of the specs I'll have in this thing, I have a little uh, Haswell-based Core i3. It's a 4330 that I'll be putting in here. Uh, it's a you know a dual-core four-thread processor. I believe it runs at 3.4 gigahertz. I also have eight gigabytes of RAM. I just have some Corsair Vengeance laying around I'm gonna throw in here. Uh, I'm not gonna be using a GPU in here. I mean, there's really no need. It does have a very basic integrated uh, you know, graphics card, but uh, once again, I don't need anything crazy. And uh, for me, this is kind of weird. Uh, I really didn't look for any OS X compatibility here, uh, which is why that you know I didn't really have OS X in mind when I bought this motherboard. Uh, but who knows, maybe something is out there, but honestly, it's really not my focus here. That said, ESXi does now support OS X, so you can actually you know, run OS X virtual machines on ESXi, which is really neat. Uh, you know, That's one of the reasons that I really want to get into it. But regardless, all that stuff aside, uh, just a really quick look around the box here. Really simple box. Uh, right back here, as you can see, we have some kind of, uh, you know, like rack mount cases and stuff. Also some regular, you know, consumer looking chassis right there. Uh, Super Micro Up Motherboards or UP. Uh, you can go ahead and read all this fun stuff if you really want to. Building Block Solutions. I'm really not going to get into that stuff. Uh, I know you guys just want to see the unboxing. And so you know what? That's what I'm going to do. So uh, we're going to go ahead and lift this up here. So we do have a uh, little, I guess, a checklist. This is all, everything that's included. So, you know, that's pretty sweet. Uh, here's a little, uh, you know, getting started guide. Looks like here they show you how to, you know, install a CPU, install a fan, show you where everything's at on the motherboard. I guess I'll go ahead and give you guys a, uh, you know, a quick little look at that. Once again, if you really want to see this, you know, go ahead and pause the video. I'm really not going to spend too much time on it, putting that fun stuff aside. Now, as you can see, they give us a bunch of SATA cables. Uh, it's not like most motherboards where there's like two in a bag. This is just one in a bag. So uh, let's see here. We have three. Looks like we have a total of six SATA cables, which is really nice. I now have more SATA cables than the average plate of spaghetti has noodles. Uh, so I guess these could come in handy maybe one day for something. But regardless, thank you to Supermicro for including those. Here we do have the rear I.O. Uh, you know, rear I.O. shield, very basic. Here we have some nice fun foam. And last but not least, the board itself. So here we have the motherboard and it's anti-static bag. So we're just gonna take it out of here. And this motherboard does feel extremely light. Uh, by the way, I will go ahead and I'll really quick uh, touch a metal pole on my desk to really try to get rid of any, you know, any remaining static electricity. Uh, but back to what I was saying, this motherboard is very basic. As you can see, there's a lot of em uh, empty space, things like that. This stuff, I'm sure, is delicious, so uh, I'll probably be chowing that down later. Uh, but regardless, as I said earlier, uh, lots of free space here, very entry-level board, just enough features that'll really get you by, get you familiar with some stuff. Uh, overall, I think it's going to be a really awesome learning board. Uh, but really quick, just to walk you guys through a couple of things here. Uh, right front and center, we do have the CPU socket. This is socket 1150. Like I said, I will be using a little Core i3, but you can also have, you know, I, I assume Core i7. There's even some Haswell-based uh, Pentiums and Celerons, I believe, out there. Uh, of course, they do make socket 1150 Xeons, which is probably what you're going to want to do if you're serious about a server. Or you know, if you're absolutely serious about a server, you probably won't go with this, this socket, this chipset. 
uh, but you know, regardless for a nice little home server or something, this board is actually probably gonna do you guys just fine. Uh, to the right of that, we do have four memory dims. This does support up to 32 gigabytes of memory at uh, 1600 speeds. So very basic, very, you know, Haswell generation there, very standard. Uh, below that, we do have some additional fan headers. Uh, we do have four, uh, two four pin headers here. So there's one, two, down here, three, four, uh, and then up here. So we have look, what looks like to be five four pin fan headers. So you could throw this in case and have plenty of fans, uh, plenty of cooling, that'll be just fine. Uh, also, I didn't mention this, I'll just be using the stock cooler. Uh, once again, not really gonna be pushing this thing all that much. And if I find that I am, I'll probably upgrade this the processor. And with that will come, you know, probably a, a whole motherboard upgrade and then, you know, cooling and stuff after that. Uh, but regardless, a nice little heatsink down here on the chipset. This does have the Intel C222 chipset, which I'm sure a lot of you guys have never even heard of. Once again, not very Hackintosh friendly as far as I'm concerned, but not the focus of this board, although it would be interesting to give that a whirl. Uh, moving down here, we have what looks to be six SATA slots, or SATA ports rather, two of them being SATA 3, four of them being SATA 2. Moving down here, we do have a little uh, USB 3.0 front header, so that's nice. Uh, to the right of that looks to be where you actually, uh, down here I think is where you plug in all of your uh, little front panel connectors and your hard drive light, all that fun stuff. Uh, okay, this is a TPM port, which, I mean, honestly, I'm probably never going to use. Here we do have a nice little internal USB 3.0 port. So maybe, you know, if you have like a, like a little Wi-Fi dongle, like a USB dongle, and this is a business machine, maybe running Windows or something, you don't want people to be able to get to it, you can just go ahead and leave that internal and not need to take up a PCI slot. Speaking of PCI slots, we're going to make our way right over here. We have a single PCI 3.0 by 16 slot, as well as two PCI by 8 slots. Uh, these are going to be useful for something like a RAID controller. Uh, maybe if you want to have a nice little home server with tons of storage on it for you know whatever you want, video files or VMs or like I said, pretty much anything. Uh, if you want to have you know some redundancy or just some really fast speeds, then you're going to want to go ahead and grab some RAID controllers. Uh, I do believe these onboard SATA ports do support some RAID configurations, but I mean if you really want to get sort of into some crazy like RAID 5 or RAID 6 or anything, then you're definitely going to want a dedicated card for that. Now I guess uh, jumping up to the top here, take a look at our power situation. Here we have a 24 pin ATX main connector, very standard, nothing out of the ordinary there. Uh, moving right over here, we do have a single four pin CPU power header. Uh, so really not gonna do much overclocking on this board. I actually, I don't think this uh, chipset even supports overclocking. Not 100% sure on that, but uh, from what I've gathered, I don't think it does support it. So that explains the, uh, you know, just the four pin fan header because you're not gonna be getting any, you know, crazy overclocks or anything on this chipset. Now, in terms of stuff that's on the motherboard, I really don't think there's too much else here that you guys are, you know, really be interested in. Uh, so I guess just to wrap up this video, I'll go ahead and introduce you guys to the rear I.O. Uh, starting right here, we do have a serial connection, which is actually still used quite a bit in terms of server stuff. I mean, in terms of like a consumer machine, I can't remember the last time that I've seen one of these and actually used it, or the last time I've actually even seen these on a consumer computer. Uh, but you know, regardless, they are still used a bit nowadays in server stuff, and well, after all, this is a server board. Uh, right here we have a dedicated LAN port. Below that we have four USB 2.0 ports. Here we have dual gigabit ethernet ports. Uh, this I believe is the Intel i217 chipset and these are the Intel i210 chipset. These I think actually do work in OS 10 in case you're curious, uh, but once again not really the focus here. And last but not least we do have a VGA. Uh, this does have a dedicated video chipset on it. There's really no need to put a GPU in this thing, but you know this is going to be pretty much all, you know, all we need. Uh, ESXi really isn't all that much to look at. Uh, you actually really you know, control ESXi and maintain it from a whole different computer. So this literally will just run the software, and that's about it. So that's pretty much all I have for the unboxing of this motherboard. Thank you guys very much for watching. Be sure to hit that like button. Be sure to let me know what other stuff that you guys would be interested on. I did say in the, in the beginning of this video that I do want to start to branch out from stuff other than the Hackintosh. Once again, that is still going to be a huge focus of this channel because it's something that I personally really enjoy and something that I know you guys personally enjoy as well. But I think this is going to be the start of a fun new chapter, some new stuff out there. And personally, I'm pretty excited for the future of Roach Technology. Thank you guys very much for watching. Be sure to leave a comment below as to what you'd like to see. And I'll see you guys back here on my channel very soon.